Howdy folks. Welcome to Motorbikes Garage. Today we got a fun one for you. We're going to be talking about cylinder honing. I think that's what we call it. We're going to be cylinder honing on this Kawasaki FR691B7D whatever engine uh, to prepare the cylinder walls for new piston rings. Now what we've got here, we've got an engine that is just burning oil like a son of a bitch. And I've gone through every other fix, uh, head gaskets, this, that, and <laughs> down to the point where I gotta pull this whole sucker apart. And I found out what has happened is the piston rings have worn out, which causes oil to seep past the piston, get in the combustion chamber, burn up, and so it needs new piston rings. And every time you need new piston rings, you need to hone the cylinder. Now, the way I'm gonna hone it is the shade tree mechanic, redneck method, with the old dingleberry stone. Yeah, that's <laughs> what they actually call these. It's not my joke. So we're going to use the dingleberry stone, specifically flex hone here, made in the USA, uh, to hone out the cylinder. Now, there is a different, a fixed stone hone. They're, these are quite a bit different. Now, we would use the dingleberry stone when I've already measured the cylinder. It is still in round. It's still within spec. We're just prepping it. We're just gonna scuff it up a little bit, clean it up to allow those piston rings to seat in there and create that cross hatch. Now, when you've gone through and you've actually taken the machine shop, that is when you use a fixed stone because that's more exact and whatever. So, all right, well, let's move in. We're gonna take a closer look at the cylinder walls and talk about why it's needed. And then we're gonna, we're gonna shove my dingleberry into the cylinder and we're gonna see what happens. Should be a good time. So stick with me and let's zoom on in. All right, don't freak out. We've got an extreme close-up of the cylinder because what I'm gonna show you exactly what's going on with this engine. As you can see right here, this cylinder, the cylinder actually looks good. There's no big heavy scratches or anything, but and you see it's got kind of a sheen on it. And what we call that, that is called glazing, meaning this, the piston rings have worn out, allowing the oil to get past the piston rings. Thus, it's been burning the oil into the side of that cylinder, filling it all in with kind of a glaze. And it's very, very important we get this glazing off before we put new piston rings in there. Because if you don't, those piston rings, they've got a seat in there where they're gonna seal on the side of that cylinder. And if you leave this glazing on there, it's just gonna be way too slippery. And it's never actually gonna seat and you're gonna keep on burning oil. And also you can see right there, We've got a little bit of a carbon buildup. We'll take care of that with the old dingleberry. All right, but before you start it, as I talked before, you really want to get the measurements of your cylinder to make sure everything is in spec and that you do not have to take it to the machine shop. So what I do there, I take out my fanciest tool I've got in the shop. I've got a micrometer started. This thing is awesome. This is pure made in America. You see, we're only dealing in inches here because that's the way we do it. And you want to take measurements. So this one here is, I think it's 3.07 inches. And you want to measure it from the very tip because you want to make sure this is where all the boom boom happens, right around that tip right there. And that's where a lot of your wear is going to happen. So measure right there and then measure it in multiple areas to make sure that cylinder is not out of round. And also you're going to measure deeper in there. And when you look at the instruction manuals, it'll tell you exactly the measurements it should be. And this one is perfectly in round when I go all the way around. So the only thing we're really dealing with is glaze. And we've got to make sure we get that off. And I'm just going to slap on some piston rings, but that's like a whole different video. Today we're just talking about cylinder honing. All right, next we're going to talk a little more about the actual tool. Now this is a dingleberry hone, but flex hone is trying to church it up. They call it the flex hone, but we're going to stick with dingleberry. And First thing you've got to do is do the size. So this thing comes in tons of different sizes and it says to order whatever size cylinder. So for example, if this was three inches, I would get a three inch flex home. But this is actually 3.07 inches. So I went up a size to three and a quarter inch. They said if you're between sizes, go up a size. But if this is three inch, get three inch, two inch, two inch, all that type of stuff. And also, the type, it's got like six different types. And what we've got here, we've got a 240 grit silicon carbide, which is suggested for cast iron because that's what this uh, cylinder is made for. So I just wanna make sure you get the right thing. And then also, oil. This is like sharpening a knife here, folks. So I got the official Flex Hone oil. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna squirt it all over here and before we actually shove it in. Cause you need a good lube before you ever shove a dingleberry down into 
a cylinder like this because lube is key, folks. You don't want to go dry straight into that cylinder. All right, so we're going to do this. I'm a little nervous, but I think it's going to happen. All right, I'm going to actually invert this, so we're going to look up from underneath because, as you can see, I've still got the crankshaft in here, and I don't really feel like pulling the flywheel off and all that crap. So to minimize debris floating down there, we're gonna go upside down so I can do inverted straight from the bottom and kind of cover this up to keep our debris to the minimum. I'm a little nervous about this, uh, but hey, we're gonna do it. That's why we're YouTubing. So stay with me and let's do it. All right, gang. Like you see, we got kind of a crazy shot. I think this is award-winning stuff here of up into the cylinder right before we hone it. Now it's got a blue twinge to it because I've got a shop towel on the bottom to help prevent getting any of this debris back in there. And also we're tilted down at a 45 degree angle to help any of it drain out. Because anytime you're dealing with the engine, the less dirty on the inside of the engine, the better. So, all right, we got our hone here and I got my flex hone oil. I have no idea how much oil to use, but you know, I'm a believer in too much, right? That seems like a lot of oil. All right. so. We're gonna go for it, folks. Now, a couple of notes. You want it rotating before you enter into the cylinder. So don't go just shove it in there and then start rotating, no. You want it turning, turning before you go in there. In Texas, we call that the Texas tongue twister or the Texas uh, cyclone, the Texas twister. All right, <laughs> so we're gonna do this. Remember, this is 3.25 into 3.07. So it might be a bit of a tight fit, so we're gonna have to persevere. Now, it says to hone at a slow speed for 20 to 45 seconds. Now, since this cylinder is in pretty good shape, I'm actually gonna do a, just a slow count, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, all right. All right, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> you see, I got my towel. So, all right, well, I'm gonna clean this up and we're gonna take a look on the inside. Again, this was a very, very short honing and we're gonna see if we need any more. All right, gang, we're back on the other side. And before I show you the results, I wanna try the other side and we're gonna do a longer hone this time. As you know, with the other one, we only did about 10 seconds. This time I'm gonna do the full minimum at 20 seconds just to see what the different results are. And also you see last time I was, I was a little shaky. So I think I'm gonna try to be a little more smoother. And also I'm not doing the towel in the back because that did not work well. So, all right, so we're going, we're going, and we're gonna insert one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, that was a much, probably about two or three times longer. Whew. All right, so let me clean up this mess. You can see, it creates a lot of debris, so dripping it downwards, if you still have parts in the engines, it looks like that is being a great move. So stay with me. All right, gang, we're back, and I have cleaned out the cylinders with carburetor cleaner. And please, whatever you do, when you clean out the inside of an engine, never use WD-40 or any type of oil base, because that can interact with how these pistons seat. Always use carb cleaner. Now, let's see how it did. This is the 10 second one where we barely hit it. Look at that, look at those cross hatches. That's exactly what you want. Just the real light scratches in the cylinder wall. You really want them at a 45 degree angle. We can see my, uh, my shaky hands did not do that great. And that was just 10 seconds. Now let's look over here at the one that was 20 seconds. I can see, I don't see a difference at all. I mean, there might be a few more scratches. First the 10. But really on these, I would say less is more because you really don't want to take off a whole lot of material to make those cylinders bigger because you want that piston nice and tight in there. So, all right, well, let's zoom out and sum this thing up. Well, yes, folks, those are white leather Puma tennis shoes. I tell you what, they're super slick. If you want to try to look like you're in the 20s and kind of fake it till you make it, give it a shot. But how about the Dingleberry Flex Home? I tell you what, I'm a fan. I think this was a fun, Fun little project, just make sure your cylinder looks good and you measure everything out. Uh, that way you don't have to take it to the machine shop if you're just putting on new rings on stuff like this, lawnmower engine, anything really. I think you can do motorcycles, boat engines, you know, whatever floats your thing, chainsaw engines. 
just make sure to do a little research and make sure you get the right flex home for that material and the right size. And I tell you what, getting something made in the United States on Amazon is not an easy thing. So the fact they're making US for, I think this one was like 30, 40 bucks, all the way from California, I think that's just, that's just the bee's knees right there. So with that, I do want to tell you, I've got every other video you could ever imagine on this Kawasaki motor. We've got head gas replacement, we've got head cleaning, piston cleaning, all sorts of other stuff. And I'll put links down below where you can watch every part of that Kawasaki motor come apart and get fixed. So with that, I appreciate y'all watching. Hang on for next week. We'll do something even more fun. More Mike out.